Sarah the Gardener and I managed to get a break in the weather to bring to you my end of April tour on time. Um, being as there's only been three weeks since the end of March tour because I was a week late, um, I'm not sure how much difference you'll see. I have actually been working really hard to clean up the garden and get things sorted for the winter but um, it isn't as hectic and as crazy it is in the middle of the growing season it is autumn after all and the garden is on a downward slope as we descend into the colder weather um, so you notice I'm wearing a jumper today it's um not exactly warm so anyway come and have a look come and see what I'm doing it's yeah is what it is so let's go come on Once again, the um, deck area is a complete and utter mess, but it's my work area and it's in a con constant state of flux. I mean, this mess is completely different from the mess that was there the other day. The basil's still hanging in there um, and the coriander is loving the um, cooler weather. Although my chives, I have to report, there has been a demise. Um, I said I was going to get rid of the sorrel and I didn't so I didn't notice that my chives died and now I can see why because I don't know how well you can see there but those are um, a onion aphids on my onions um, they don't flip to other like they're not going to get on my broccoli because they're a different kind they prefer onions, so I have sprayed them, but I will continue to spray them and I will do my best to save my garlic chives. I have enough seeds in the seed heads to regenerate if everything goes pear-shaped. Uh, in the flowers, um, the dahlias are done. I just need to prune them up. Their demise happened really quickly. Um, Blooming gladiolus keep popping up. I need to clean them up and sort them out. I have a plan. So um, the zinnias are still doing well. Um, really not enjoying the stock. Um, carnation's too messy, got to go. Gowra needs a haircut. This whole bed needs an overhaul. It is a complete disaster. I have peas. There are peas. Oh, that one's probably fat enough to have a wee look. Let's have a look. Look at that. Peas. Yum. Yum yum. Okay, now I had a, a brainwave with my peas. Now, I used to grow really tall ones, but they don't cope here in the wind. So most of the things I grow now are dwarf. Um, but this is how I normally do it. See, I've got a trellis here and then the little peas come up and hold them, in theory, hold themselves to, to the trellis. However, when the wind does get in here, which it does, it just rips it off the trellis um, and then they flop all over the place. So what I actually it this time is so I just popped this netting here this um it's actually uh, the shelf from uh it's the shelf from an old um greenhouse someone gave it to me because their greenhouse fell apart and they had the shelves left um and so I'm just using that to hold it in and then on the other side I've just used a bamboo pole and then I just lifted it up and tied it to the trellis to hold it in on this side because the flopping wasn't as bad on the inside but what I thought I would do next time is use get some mesh like at least you know like a good um, five centimeter ten centimeter gap um, and run that along in two parallel rows like that and so have the peas growing in the middle so I'll sow the seeds in the middle of the row not under the trellis but in the middle so that they've got support but I can also reach in and get the peas because these ones are trapped behind bars so I shall have to oh 
one for later right um, yeah so that's my new plan with the peas it's too late for these ones but that's my new pea revelation um, the corn had last time had the mustard cover crop flowering so I've actually whipped it down and just chopped it up and left it on the surface so that should be able to break down and be um, yeah let the worms do the job I don't need this bed again until the spring so there's heaps of time I will put um, compost on the top of the corn at some point on top of the cover crop at some point but not today um, the squash bed has a lovely new um, mustard cover crop growing there nicely it always looks so lush at this point so where the onion and the glass gem corn was last season I have um, a mustard not a lupin cover crop so we've got lupin there um, and that's because the onion and the corn they're really really hungry um, and I don't know why I did it no um, so I figured um, with the nitrogen fixing properties of the lupin it should be able to give back after the crops that are hungry and been in there for quite some time so that's the plan and then this is where the tomatoes were and I've put a layer of compost on the top of the mustard cover crops so I chopped and dropped it like I did with this one here um, and then I put a good nice healthy layer of my own compost on the top um, so this should be ready for the onions in the middle of June so that's the plan so we're on the way so pretty much apart from the flower bed this first row doesn't need much at all at this point um, but oh and then I took care of the old leeks there was remember there were some manky old leeks there and there were some um, shoots coming off the leeks and so I um, I was going to transplant them into the bed that the overflow onions are going in this year but there was uh, some of the roots were pink which could indicate some kind of root rot disease and there was rust in the top leaves so I thought well I'm not going to introduce that to my new bed so I actually took the ones that looked like they might work and I put them in a container so nothing's wasted and the rest of them ended up in the kitchen and then what I have done I don't know if you can see here but oh there we go there's one there um, I've sown um, a mustard cover crop and so this will be as beautiful as that bed very soon um, the odds and stods are still doing their thing um, the okra are still flowering the peanuts haven't started to go yellow yet although they're looking a little bit manky and believe it or not the peppers are still not peppers what are they aubergines eggplants they're still flowering so they'll take what they can give me this was the melon so I took down the trellis took the last of the watermelons they actually weren't that bad um, I thought they'd be a bit insipid being as they're so late in the season but they're quite sweet and lovely so that's all gone and there's a cover crop there of mustard too I believe did I no this is um, lupin that's a lupin cover crop because it I didn't want to put mustard because the brassicas are there and so I didn't want to do too many brassicas in a row to increase the risk of club root so there's mustard in there to regenerate the soil from the melons and prepare them for the brassicas next time with the brassicas I've um, I've sown my seedlings finally they're a bit manky um, the caterpillars got to them but I think they'll be all right now that they're in the ground I was right about the ones that were in there before these are just offshoots off the summer ones and look so there's a meal coming out of those that's for sure so that's exciting food you didn't plant and the kohlrabi are still in there doing their thing on this side is the salad I'll put lots of lettuce in it just happened to have 
lots of lettuce seedlings and I thought what the heck um, and these little ones had actually self-seeded so I spaced them out I don't even remember letting a lettuce go to seed in the first place but I'll take it so we should have a lot of lettuce um, yeah the peppers are still hanging in there um, I harvested most of the ripe and ready ones um, but what I think I'll do now oh I don't know um, I made a lovely lovely um, green curry chili sauce um, absolutely delicious nice little kick to it but uh, yeah I'm not sure what to do with the rest of these I mean I think the bells are pretty much finished although they're still flowering um, but the leaves have got spots and I should probably be worrying about that um, but you know they're still peppers I think with the others the big ones I'll just wait until they all turn red harvest them as they go and then um, make our sweet chilli sauce with them now this is where the zucchini was but there was also something in there there was a couple of lemongrass because I put them down in the spring just set them on the surface and then I forgot all about them well I didn't forget about them but I kept meaning I'll move you soon and I never did and oh my gosh the roots were like oh my gosh it was quite the battle to get them out of the pot but I did it eventually um, I'll put a picture up of the um, tangle now see that was really bad um, but what I've done is they look a bit um, they look tired because well they went through the ringer but I've put them in these lovely pots here that I picked up for a bargain and I'm sure they will bounce back soon enough so there's two of them and they look quite nice flanking the deck the shed so yeah they'll, they'll bounce back I'm sure they will it was quite traumatic for both of us to sort that out now this is cucumber but it's actually not because this is what should have been the cucumber it was garlic last year and then that one um, painted mountain corn which I pulled out because the rats got to it um, and because I've had to rejig the garlic so the cucumber last season was where the garlic was um, but due to habitation of the different beds um, I swapped them with the cucumber so we're pretending that the cucumber was there last year last season and so then that makes this time I think the beans are going in here but there's a lovely mustard cover crop yeah it makes sense on paper but explaining my crop rotation is rather tricky um, so yeah so the beans will be in there next year and the cucumbers will be where the leafy greens are I've got masses of spinach look at that um, and I've planted there's my rainbow beet and my celeriac and then I've got some tatsoi bok choy and other oh and one box in there um, then we've got carrots carrots and parsnips in there Swedes there's a, oh there's a new row of carrots I put that in and I put in another row of Swedes we like Swedes there's beetroot fresh new beetroot and I'm not quite sure what these seeds are but I think I'm gonna have to weed them out um, yeah they don't look like they belong um, and then there's fennel in there as well so so this is where the potatoes were and um, so it's got a lovely mustard seed cover crop but then what I realized after I sowed it is that um, next time around this will be this end will be carrots and carrots don't like a lot of organic material so what I'm gonna have to do is um, when I chop and drop it I'll take this end section and I'll just sprinkle it over the rest of it so that there's no rotting organic material in where my carrots are going to go I feed my carrots with a liquid feed so um, it's not like they don't get any nutri additional nutrient they seem to like it that way 
the beans are still going oh my gosh magnificent um, I don't know how low the temperature is going to have to drop before they stop but I'll keep taking what they give me so that's exciting and this sign is in the right place for the right new, for the new season so I mean do we call this the new season the first um, bed of the new season my garlic and you can see look it is up already I only planted it what is it a Monday or Friday or something I think I did it on Friday so that so that was a whole week ago they've been in a week and they're oh there's another one over there once you start seeing them they pop up all over the place this is my own homegrown compost so there's a lot of weeds and things in there as well but no it's good to see them coming up um the asparagus is still doing its thing it's starting to i think this is more wind burn than natural dying off but it's normally about mid-june that they start to go yellow and i'll chop them down so for now yeah that's it that's what we have um jerusalem artichokes well, I think that's a sign that they're ready. Well, maybe. Apparently a frost is good for them, but we don't get frost, so yeah. In the dome, it's a mess, please don't judge me. But I do have, I've got some cuttings for a project. I'm going to make a hedge with the um, rosemary. So I'm just in here because I have learned rosemary don't like wet feet. And they were getting too wet on the deck. Um, and so some of them have succumbed, but uh, most of them are looking really good. So they'll be good for my hedge. Um, so there's quite a lot. Um, and also some mullen beer here. I'm going to um, make a windbreak out of these. So that's quite cool. I'm quite stoked. They've taken really well. So much so, I've actually started some more down under here. I'm trying to keep them in a moist condition. So... Oh, you can kind of see there, there's some in there. I don't know what state they are, I'm just leaving them to it. So, and then um, I've put my water distributor away for the season. I'm not sure I'm going to need it again until the weather warms up in the spring. Um, and then I've got my, oh, sweet peas. Now these are dwarf sweet peas. So same with the normal sweet peas, if it gets too high they get bashed about, so I'm trying some dwarf ones. Um, there's some leek seedlings, so I don't have to worry about those other ones anyway. Uh, broad beans, and then I've got sweet red onions, pukakoe longkeeper onions. Um, oh, these are chamomile, this is also for a project, but already that smells lovely, so I've got to separate those out. Um, and so I've got some Spanish white spanish onion here and some pearl drop which they're a bit slow to pop up i might need to put some more seeds in i think um oh hang on oh, they're, they're there i think they're coming patience and then these are buffy buffy peony poppies because i can't grow peonies here anyway because they're um peonies i can't grow them here because it's too warm so this is the next best thing although i didn't get many seedlings up maybe i need to sow some more there and this is um giant aster lovely buffy giant aster as well so oh, i just couldn't help myself when i was buying the onion seedlings right uh, onion seeds so that's the dome so there are things going on in here that i need to maintain but it's definitely a shadow of its former spring self um are the artichoke is doing well Oh, I have these containers here. Some of them have got daffodils in them, but I, they all came up blind um, last summer, last spring. So I have to sort them out, split them, give them more room, I think. Um, oh, and then potatoes. I thought that was daffodils, and it's not. It turns out it's potatoes, so I'll take that. Um, so yeah, artichokes. There's more containers down there that I need to sort through. Um, the yams, uh, if things are coming towards the end of their life, I tend to not worry about weeding because I'm going to clear the beds soon enough anyway. Um, uh, the flower bed is, yeah, it's looking, yeah, it'll be better next season because 
it'll be more organized um, and then the cut flower the edible flowers I think the nasturtium is taking over in the battle so although this one's very pretty but I don't know what it is it was in the packet so that's really pretty so if you know what that one is let me know um, yeah um, oh and the windbreak I made I'm sure I showed you that it's really having an impact because my rhubarb is back to looking really good again um, I probably won't take any this summer this the rest of the season I'll let it die back down it's been through enough so I'll just let it regenerate itself and then provided I can keep the wind at bay um, yeah we'll have good rhubarb next season uh, there's a mustard cover crop where the pumpkins were and all over the back I think I have a rat problem <laughs> check this out I my giant pumpkin hubby the gardener was supposed to move it for me um, yeah I don't think we'll be moving it now and my loofers are doing fine one of them's rotted because the rats did actually get into it while it was tender but um, the rest of them look good so I'm got some loofers to play with that'll be fun um, still optimistically still flowering um, I need to sort this bed out oh dear oh didn't see that okay well that is ironic because right over there is my rat trap so I will need to get onto this this will be on the list for next week sorting out this top end pumpkin bed because it would seem I have a rat problem a defiant rat problem cheeky monkey in fact this whole top end I have plans for it I have yeah I'm going to do a bit of a project up here and just get this all sorted because it's not a happy healthy area right now but it will be I have to show you one more thing I'm really excited about this one this is a project I've been working on for quite a while and I thought I'll share it with you anyway even though it's not finished Ta -da! I am building a rock it's um, kind of like paper mache only I'm using um, fabric and cement um, and I've put the frame chicken wire frame around and then I just munched it so that it's not like a fake square thingy so um, I wanted a big architectural landscapey type feature and to get a rock the size that I wanted um, would have been too expensive and too difficult so I thought what the heck I'll make one so I'm in the process of making so it's a long and slow project but what I will do is it is going up here so um, it is going to go up here so a nice big feature coming right up out of the on the point here it'll be awesome and that's where all the rosemary will go as well a hedge around it and it'll be fabulous so yeah stay tuned as that project turns into something but it's quite good the plastic has actually done quite a good job of killing the um, kukuia so I just need to like rake it off and then pull out any stray um, stray roots and we're done so but yeah it's gonna be a labor of love but yeah it'll be fun yay and so that's my whistle stop tour of the garden at the end of April so one more month to go of autumn and then we're into winter so I shall have to see how much I can get done in May actually May is quite interesting for me because it's one of those seasons like I found myself in April just being um, a bit meh and really not put, doing as much work as I could possibly have it's one of those months that lull you into a false sense of 
well winter's coming anyway so what I do in May is I do this thing um, it's a bit cheesy hashtag make May count and so I try to do something in the garden every day and I try to post about it on all my social media at least once a day if not every other day because at the moment I've been very 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 lax and I'm really 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 sorry so things should pick up during May I'm going to just make things happen gonna make that month I've got to make that month before um, the really cold weather starts I mean I think it's cold now but I don't even know the half of it so yeah May is going to be productive it's going to be fun I'm gonna get so much done and I'm gonna come out at the end of it and you're gonna go wow Sarah you've done so much and I'll be like thank you um, well that's the plan hopefully um, have to have weather on my side but I'll have to get creative if it's not um, but yes so thanks so much for watching come again and join me in May I might even squeeze in a video in the middle of make May count to help you know keep me on top of things so thanks so much for watching take care and we'll see you next time take care bye bye